Let's look here at what is different in eukaryotes when it comes to gene expression. And one of the big differences is the RNA polymerase of eukaryotes. So in eukaryotes, there are more RNA polymerases available, and the RNA polymerase does not come with a sigma subunit. So remember, in prokaryotes, the RNA polymerase used in the sigma subunit could bind to the promoter region directly. But there is no such thing in eukaryotes. So you need other mediators for RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter. And those mediators are transcription factors. So transcription factors have the similar function to the sigma subunit, but in this case we have multiple transcription factors, and they are some are very general, so that they can enhance transcription of many genes, and others are more specific, so they enhance the transcription of specific genes. Either way, you need a right set of transcription factors for RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter region. Another big difference is that there is no nu uh, we didn't have a nucleus in prokaryotes, but eukaryotes have a nucleus, and that creates a separation, a physical separation between where transcription happens inside of the nucleus now and translation, which happens outside in the cytoplasm. And the other difference is that the RNA transcript of eukaryotes is not ready for transcription once it is, it's not ready for translation once it's transcribed. So we need to modify it before it can be translated. So like we said, the RNA polymerase of eukaryotes doesn't have a sigma subunit. It, instead, it needs transcription factors to bind to the promoter region first, and then the polymerase can bind to the promoter region. So it needs the right combination of transcription factors to be located on the promoter before RNA polymerase can bind, bind to the promoter region and start transcription. Other set of proteins like activators combine to enhance the regions and increase the chances of transcription happening. So again, transcription here in eukaryotes is happening inside of the nucleus. Once all the transcription factors are in the right place, bound to the promoter, then RNA polymerase now can bind to that complex of transcription factors and start transcription. So the RNA polymerase has now completed transcribing the coding region and this is the resulting RNA transcript. Now notice that this RNA transcript has exons and introns. So those exons will be expressed, and you can think exo express, while those introns, think of it, they keep the information in for them, they are not expressed. So here in eukaryotes, the finalized RNA transcript is not ready for translation yet. So we still need to go through the process of splicing or removing the introns, and we need to do further modifications to the ends of the transcript. Those modifications include removing the introns, adding a 5' G cap and a poly A3 poly a prime tail. So this is a set of multiple adenines added to the 3' prime end of the transcript and a guanine added to the 5' prime end of the RNA transcript. And well, the introns are removed and then the exons need to be glued back together. So here we've added the poly A tail, the 5' prime G the 5 prime G cap and we put together the exons and now this is the messenger RNA that is ready for translation. So once it's ready it will be exported out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm where the ribosomes are located and the ribosomes can now read that messenger RNA and translate that into protein. So we can see here how having a nucleus create, makes a big difference for eukaryotes. Now we have a separation between where transcription happens inside the nucleus and where translation happens in the cytoplasm. And that gives us the opportunity to modify the transcript before it comes out of the nucleus for translation. So this is something that prokaryotes don't have the opportunity to do because for them, both of these processes are happening in the same location.